Welcome once again. The African Union is calling for calm and restraint in Kenya following deadly protests by the opposition groups that uh, saw deaths and rival gangs loot and destroy property. Uh, AU Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat expressed deep concern at violence that led to deaths and what he called interruption of certain economic activities in Nairobi and other cities in the country, where supporters of opposition Azimio Lao Moja won Kenya a coalition led by their leader, Raila Odinga, were protesting. The chairperson urges all stakeholders to exercise calm and engage in dialogue to address any differences that may exist in the supreme interest of national unity and reconciliation, Faki said. Um, in this regard, he further said, the chairperson wishes to recall the successful conduct of general elections in August 2022 in Kenya and the sub subsequent unanimous confirmation of the election outcome by the Supreme Court. Mr. Odinga's supporters poured into the streets for the second week, protesting against the high cost of living and what they say is inherentness, inherent opaqueness of the Independent National uh, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, I beg your pardon, which Mr. Odinga accuses of rigging him out of last year's presidential poll in favor of eventual winner William Ruto. Dr. Ruto's victory was, however, confirmed by the Supreme Court in September after describing Odinga's evidence as hot air. But uh, Odinga, of course, has argued new evidence proved that he had been rigged out and demanded action by the commission uh, to open up their servers. Now, joining us is uh, Gakuna Njima Castro, International Affairs and Political Intelligence Analyst. He joins us from uh, Kenya to discuss all that is happening. Uh, Gakuna, good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad to, uh, to be on Breakfast Central this morning from Nairobi. All right. Uh, let's get a clear picture of what currently is happening and if, if you know, some of this could have been avoided. The claims that Raila Odinga has that, you know, the election was stolen from him um, and, uh, of course, you know, demanding that the servers be made available or, or be made open. Um, and then also, you know, are the protests seeming more than just, you know, protests against austerity measures and, you know, the economy? Is this really just Raila Odinga's personal battle? Uh, first of all, I want to say that it's not about the Odinga. Of course, whatever, Leila Odinga is the person who is reading the mass protest. Of course, he's the leader of Azimio. But it's not about Leila Odinga. Maybe he has something that we all Kenyans need to listen to. Even if uh, some of them need not to be obeyed, as something as a Kenyan that we need to have a national dialogue and, of course, listen to whatever these people they are talking about. Uh, on his demands and his uh, call for mass action and the, the national protest is on uh, the, the level of uh, living standard because it's too high and the cost of living is too high. And of course, he also uh, working out on calling for protest against the elections that we are uh, done in August 2022, uh, which also the uh, Supreme Court confirmed that uh, President William Ruto was uh, duly elected by the Kenyans and he legally uh, uh, sits in state house as the uh, the elected president of the Republic of Kenya. So, to me, uh, about uh, Raida Odinga calling for these demonstrations, uh, it's not just because it is Raida Odinga or is because the leader of opposition. Of course, being opposition, there are those excesses that they need to uh, to to look of the government. But it is about Kenyans having a dialogue at this moment and Kenyans, of course, having to come together and listen together uh, as Kenyans, regardless of the political uh, affiliates or political divide. All right, let's talk about the underlying interests. Now, whilst um, Raila Odinga and some people have com complained about the high cost of living, the removal of fuel subsidy, uh, there's been talking about, you know, conversations about uh, many things that have changed in Kenya. There are others that are of the opinion that these protests beheaded by Raila Odinga are coming from a selfish standpoint, perhaps for a handshake between him and government while lives are being lost. Can you give us a sense to, you know, what the underlying reason for this protest is? Uh, both sides have stated as a hard line. They doesn't want hardship. Uh, the government has proclaimed that there's been no hardship. I think there'll be negotiation. It will be done uh, within the lines of constitution or the legal basis that the constitution stipulates. 
Uh, neither has the Azimio uh, also claimed to be uh, for hardship because he has also uh, alluded that they are not for hardship and whatever they are doing, they are doing the interest of Kenyans. Of course, so many things have changed uh, when this government came in. Uh, subsidies have been upheld or, or they have been uh, withdrawn. There are no subsidies. And uh, of course, now there are some taxes. Of course, has been there's uh, some uh, punitive uh, taxes have been uh, adjusted uh, against uh, the Kenyans' will. And uh, this is one of the issues that Kenyans they are feeling. Either the government has disconnected with the, uh, the, the, the hustlers or the little wajikos in the crowd, or there is a, a, a total ignorance of the government uh, of the situation that Kenyans they are living in today. And this is one of the attitude or um, the, the, the feeling that Kenyans are feeling, and that's why they are in the street protesting. Of course, being in the street protesting, there is uh, that, of course, they are doing it under Azimio, uh, One Kenya Alliance, which is led by the opposition leader, Laida Odinga. But they have also, uh, against Laida Odinga, are joining the protest with the uh, electoral injustices in Kenya, and of course, calling for uh, uh, the, 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 the the, to, to, to stop or, or the, 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 the government to stop uh, the process of uh, acquiring new IBC officials. Uh, Kenyans also feel that the government is either ignoring what the, the restriction in Kenya or they have disconnected with them. Um, and, and now let's talk about the African Union here. And um, you know, what are your expectations with the protest? You know, do you think it's going to continue to get worse? Um, and of course, you know, do you think that the international community, you know, has maybe a little role to play? And the international community, I mean, actually, you know, the African Union and neighboring African countries that may be able to mediate, you know, with the situation. Um, what role do you think that they can play to avoid this getting worse? I'm expecting that the protest and this pull and push between the government and opposition will continue. And to the level we are getting in, it is, seems that it is going to escalate in a bad way. And it, it is high time that the international community now come, comes in and to try to uh, negotiate or navigate around the, 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 the uh, existing structures and to actually now be able to, or, or to make uh, the government and the opposition aware that uh, the country is bigger than either of them. The international community, especially the AU, has a big role to play, uh, including also the East African community. They has a big role to play because Kenya is a country that is looked up and its democracy has been growing and it is a, 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 a regional player in the security sector. So once Kenya is uh, have civil wars or the Kenya is political, political stability is threatened, then we can tell that Kenya will, be not, will not be able to participate uh, regionally or internationally in the uh, uh, political or security spheres uh, of governance. So it is for international community, of course, to try to mediate around the, 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 the issues that the uh, opposition leaders is talking about and to try to see how uh, the government and the opposition, of course, can come together, reason together and see how Kenya can work together because uh, the insecurity in Kenya or the security, insecurity of Kenya is a concern to every member country in Africa. Uh, as we wrap up this conversation, can you give us an insight into the impact of this protest on the everyday Kenyan, the businesses? We're seeing that, um, unfortunately, uh, some farms have been attacked. We've seen that properties belonging to the former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta's farms, have also been attacked. So give us an insight into what the true picture is and how businesses have been affected. Of course, uh, since this protest started last week on Monday, because this is the second week, and we are expecting even on Thursday, that is tomorrow, there will also be another protest because the Azimio 
uh, denounced that uh, Tuesday, Monday and Thursday will be the day that we are protesting. What they have instead fear uh, in people because businesses are closed on during these days of Madamano. I know people doesn't want to risk uh, opening their business because there are those protesters who will take advantage of the situation as they want to root uh, other people's property, they want to damage or they want to steal from other people's doing business there. So businesses all over the Nairobi and places where protests, especially Nairobi, Kisumu and other uh, counties where protests have started or they have been experienced, businesses have been closing uh, during these days. And uh, the situation, as I said, is escalating in a bad way because uh, the it's very unfortunate that we have experienced that we have people or uh, they are allegedly they are, are government funded goons uh, attacking the former president's uh, uh, property or, or, or a lad because these are very unfortunate uh, situation that if Kenyans we can reach to this level that we can actually uh, invade uh, the former president's uh, properties or uh, residence, then it tells you that it is capable of every Kenyan to, to, to actually attack you wherever you are. May I quickly because, interject you know, really, are... please? Can I quickly interject? You, you know, I, I just want to clarify something. Uh, I don't know if I yeah. heard you correctly, talking about government hired goons that are invading the property of the former president. Are these claims confirmed or their mere speculation? They are alleged, they are alleged they are government because I, I don't know how government can actually uh, try to uh, actually disassociate with it, with the, with the allegations, because it is still allegations. Uh, because, of course, we have some uh, news and the, 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 the newspapers, today's newspaper have been reading that uh, a person who is working uh, in government was, uh, of course, one of the uh, major organizer and father of the, of the people or the guns to uh, attack this uh, uh, the lad. And of course, we ha also have the uh, government officials and MPs, some MPs uh, from the gov from the government side, they were elected from, by the elected other UDA, which is the ruling party. Of course, they had terms that say, if you persist or continue uh, with this protest, and because they are alleging that Uhuru Kenyatta is funding this protest, if they continue uh, funding and doing this protest, then and they, they they also face the wrath because they have also rats they have properties that uh, they think also they can be invaded if the protesters also continue uh, to protest and of course uh, make uh, our businesses lose their uh, interests and and profits. So it's still a, 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 an issue that the police is uh, trying to look at, but uh, being being a fact that. The police did not arrive in the situation on this uh, uh, crime of sin, uh, as you no know, crime of okay, on time because they went there yesterday. That is 24 hours after the invasion of the land. So uh, the Kenyans have so many questions because these people, or the president's property is under high protection. Whether it's a, a retired president or a former president. Uh, it is at a, a very high, it's a secured place, and this person is guarded by the government and government machineries. So how the police did not arrive there on time is a situation uh, which is uh, at a, uh, Kenyan's interest to know why and how this police could not come on time. Of course, the IG, the, the, the Inspector General of Police, uh, said that city uh, it is me to check on whatever these protesters will be doing and it is about me and it is for me to make sure that every business, every property, every life is safeguarded and the police will be there to safeguard and to protect uh, the interests of Kenyans uh, by checking on their uh, properties and businesses. It's a but really, how um, comes that... Yeah, it's a really unfortunate situation but, that we have there. Yes. Very uncomfortable as well. I mean, the protests have halted yeah, sure. lives and, pro you know, lives of people and businesses. We've also seen that it's like a house divided within itself, as there are governors. The governor of Kisumu County has been seen leading the protests against the president and is, you know, stated several reasons why this is happening. We, we of course, will be bringing more updates, seeing as there's another protest scheduled to hold tomorrow. But we thank you very much, Mr. Castro, for spending time with us this morning on Breakfast Central. Thank you for having me.